Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, so um, uh, today we'll uh, continue on my last class uh, on the limit of uh, matrix model in a perturbative regime. So let me remind you what we proved yesterday. So we considered uh, a matrix model which is of this form. And what we proved yesterday is uh, as asymptotics, the first asymptotics of this model. So we assume that so the trace of V, if I look at the Asian, is bounded below by C times identity. So this was to use all these coercive inequalities. And we assume that uh, V, I can write it as uh, the Gaussian potential plus some perturbation. Okay. And then what we proved is that uh, this, then, oh, maybe I should write something like this. So then this implies that there exists epsilon, which depends on C, positive, so that if epsilon smaller than epsilon C, and these two conditions are satisfied, uh, then you have a convergence of uh, any word. Uh, towards some limit. Uh, which, in fact, I didn't show, show it to you, but I show you that this limit satisfies some recursion uh, relation. Again, I show it to you when you have only one matrix, but it's really the same when you have several, and it's done in the nodes. And then uh, you have this representation that, so if Q is a sum of a monomial, so these are monomials, then it's uh, alpha Q, uh, Q factor, uh, QK factorial divided by QK factorial, times uh, the number of planar maps with one star of type, uh, so xi1, xi, uh, k, and qk stars of type uh, k. Okay, and this is a, the summation of a, a q1, so over all the q, so that this alpha q is non-zero. Okay, and uh, I showed you, I, I also uh, noticed that this implies that you have also convergence of the free energy and just by derivation. So what, so if I denote that, maybe I should denote that to epsilon. So this will be the integral from zero to epsilon of to t when n goes to infinity. Okay, so what I just want to, to emphasize is that this result uh, was really uh, quite uh, important in physics, but also in uh, operator algebra, because it makes a, a relation between uh, the combinatorics of these maps, which is really non-trivial, and um, random matrices. And so it was used in several purposes. For instance, so people were interested in the, the combinatorics of these maps. For instance, to do a easing model on random graph. Okay, easing model on random graph would correspond to take uh, so vertices which are white and vertices which are which are blue, and then having some relation between them. Okay and then create uh, maps, planar maps, based on uh, these two ingredients. OK, 
Okay, so a planar map again. Oh. Something like this. Ah. Okay, so you can imagine what this, uh, what here. Okay, so this is one. Okay, so uh, so Ising model would be to co to compute the number of this uh, type of maps where you are given a, a number of uh, white vertices, a number of blue vertices, and the number of connections between them. And uh, so so it's Ising model because you have two different states. Okay. And you, you are interested in the size of the interface between these two uh, states. So this corresponds, if you remember what we said yesterday, to the to Q, which will be uh, x1 to the fourth plus uh, x2 to the fourth. So these are for the two uh, blue model. And then you have some interaction, which will be x i1, x i2. And so this uh, the the this uh, quantity, which uh, also uh, can be seen to be the sum of the product of minus alpha q times these numbers. Okay, so these quantities could be uh, computed, I think, by meta by using this relation and by being able to compute uh, the partition function for the matrix model. So now there are uh, other uh, ways to compute this, this kind of, uh, new, uh, of numbers, but I, th I think it was the first way uh, that this was, uh, this was done. Uh, another application of this kind of, uh, of relation uh, that I use, for instance, is that sometimes you have this kind of uh, uh, enumeration question and, um, and here you would like, so what I was interested in was to define a threshold state based on this kind of combinatorics. Okay, so this was some work with uh, Dimash Atenko and Von Jones. We, were, we wanted to define a, 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 threshold, uh, a trace. So what is a trace? A trace is just uh, some linear functional and polynomials which have properties, which is positivity. So positivity is, uh, is just that the trace of p, p star is non-negative. Okay, p star is just when you take the adjoint. I mean, imagine that you plug in a self-adjoint variables, self-adjoint matrices, so this defines p star. And so you need to have two of one, which is one, and two of pq, well, two of qp. So this is what is called a threshold state. So, and we were interested to know if this sum the sum we had with the specific choice that we were interested in here was a threshold state. And so by so seeing it at a, as some limit of a, of a matrix model, it was easy to see it was a threshold state. Okay, but when you are given just this kind of sum, it's highly non-trivial. Okay, so this was one use of uh, the, the uses, so there are many uses of course, also in the work of NR is to understand the topological recursion. And uh, so compute interesting partition function. and uh, show that uh, sums over map define a threshold state. So that's uh, a few of the applications that I want to mention, but there are much more. And I hope I convince you that the proof of the, con of the convergence was not uh, very sophisticated, but yet, uh, I mean, there are not so many improvements over this if you look at colored, uh, at many uh, matrices uh, models. Okay, so today I would like to continue by showing you the next uh, order. I will not prove the central limit theorem. I think it's done in the notes. But, uh, so what I would like to prove 
now. And then we will go to non-perturbative results. So the theorem will be, again, the same hypothesis. Maybe a epsilon prime is uh, smaller than some an epsilon c. So what we want to prove is uh, this time that if we look at this minus the limit, So this is going to converge as n goes to infinity towards some uh, two, one, I, one, x, i, k. k and other corollary, as yesterday, we can see that if we look at the log of the partition function, minus n square, uh, times, so this is F0 epsilon. So this will converge towards F1 epsilon, which is going to be this time minus the integral from 0 to epsilon of to 1. Okay, why? Because again, remember, uh, I should have written this. Here also I forgot this, and this is important. Okay, so remember you can uh, deduce this kind of estimate because when you differentiate with respect to epsilon, the log at the nv epsilon, what you find is n squared times the integral of the expectation with under the model Vt of uh, 1 over n, the trace of Q. Okay, so from here it's clear that if you can do the expansion under this model where you have the strength uh, T in front of the, uh, of the Q, then, uh, then you can uh, I mean, you can see that this is bounded because we had this nice uh, control, so there is no problem to take the limit and the integral after all. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's any, uh, any um, choice of... Uh, Ij in uh, one M. Okay, and, but again, I will only show you the proof when M is equal to one because otherwise it's kind of more messy to have all these indices uh, going around. Okay, so is there any question on on the result or before I go to the proof? So, um, uh, okay, so it's, uh, the point is that epsilon is small. So, so I mean, if you look at one matrix, uh, somehow I, I assume this condition. So you know that under this condition, the support of the eigenvalues will be connected. So in, for one matrix, we are in the, in the setting where we know, where, where I will show that you can do it in, in greater generality. And for several matrices, you, it's the right, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a natural condition. And actually, so as I said, this, this result was extended recently by Jekyll and Dabrowski without this condition on epsilon, but keeping uh, convexity. But only this result, yes. We don't know with several matrices how to, how to do the next order on the only the condition of convexity. So certainly for one matrix, uh, 
This, this is a very small subset of the hypothesis under which we know we can do the limit on the expansion. But I will discuss after. Okay, so, so how do we prove that? So I remind you that uh, what we, what we have, had proved was uh, two key estimates, which was a, a concentration and uh, compactness. Okay, so which was that we could bond this guy where the yk are just a trace of x to the k minus expectation. So we had a priori bond on that. And also we knew that uh, we had bond on and the moments, so this was smaller, I think I had something like this, the k of 4k, which is smaller than, so I, th I think I said square root of n. And uh, what we were using was uh, then to get the limit was a dyson schwinger equation that we are again going to use. So, So we take m equal to one. So the dyson tringer equation was that uh, I have the trace of x k minus one times x plus epsilon k prime of x times the product of y k. So I will only take one y one uh, of this field in the equation or the, or, or none. Okay, but so the, then the, the relation was this. Ah, that's not a very good choice. And plus, uh, so L. All right, so this was the Schrodinger Dyson equation when I, when I take only one guy there. So to, to prove this result over there, I will only need that. If I would like to prove, the, for instance, the central limit theorem, I will use the full product, but yeah, I need only that. And what I am going to do first is to show you the, the convergence of the covariance. Okay, so it's always the, the strategy that to get uh, an additional information on, uh, on the moments of where you have, uh, let's say, p traces, you will first need to get some information when you have p plus one traces, then plug in back into your equation to get some information like this. Because uh, somehow in the dyson trigger equation, you always have one more, uh, uh, because of this, you have always have one more trace on the right-hand side. So if you want to proceed by recursion, you, you need to do uh, this. And so how do I get uh, some uh, the convert the want to do is convergence first of the correlation. Okay, so the lemma be that so if I take any for all K and L it converges towards some CKL. Okay. So I look at this equation. So this, uh, so, and what I want to do is to have some equation of uh, the moments of Ys. Okay. So I'm going to recenter it. And so if I do that, so this will be just uh, a covariances. And here, what I uh, what I do with the right hand side, maybe I should. Lambda. So I just recenter it. This is going to be so. Uh, so I, I, I subtract the mean of each of these guys. 
M N L. Then I have the expectation of the trace X K. So here, so I have Y K minus L minus two. Uh, ah, of course, I took L L. Ah, no, only finitely. What? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I always uh, use the same indices, and then, <laughs> then that uh, once I, I was at the, uh, I was coming in the state, and the, the officer, when I told him I was a mathematician, he asked me, but why don't you use uh, Chinese letters? You know, <laughs> and it's true that uh, uh, if you use only Latin and Greek, at some point you may short of uh, letters. Okay, anyway, so, so when, uh, when I recenter, I will get uh, this guy, when I recenter this. Then when I recenter this, I have the same thing with this one, but it's symmetric, so I have two of them. And then uh, what I get is the sum over m, and this time I have the product of the y's, so y m, uh, but I have one over n. And then I have uh, this, uh, uh, this, this guy. Okay. So, so this will go to zero because I know the moments are bounded. And this I already see, this will go to uh, so to, to what I denoted tau epsilon, or maybe when I have only one matrix, it was mu epsilon of uh, x k plus l minus two. Okay. Uh, if I look again at the right hand side, I can uh, replace this by the by the limit, and again I will have something small. Okay, so I can replace this by the limit. Plus, plus delta, okay, plus two sum over m, m n minus m times this covariance, and so this will go to zero. And uh, so what I see that I, I have now things which uh, looks quite similar, which are covariances. Okay, so I have uh, covariances, the problem uh, I have eventually before, with respect to what I had when epsilon was going to zero, is that this equation on the covariances is not recursive anymore. Okay, so I can put everything on the same side. What I have is that the trace what do I have? I have xk minus 1 times, uh, times x plus epsilon uh, q prime of x. And then I put this term here. It's going to be minus 2 sum of, so this limit, uh, mm is not, is not absolutely great. Uh, m M, uh, okay, let me change it again to S. Okay, to MS, and then I have XK minus S minus 2, and then I have YL. And so what I just showed is that this is going to converge to, ah, and here I forgot the L, which was over there. This converges towards L mu epsilon of xk plus L uh, minus 2. Okay, and so what I would like to say that I can put any polynomial here. So this shows some of the convergence of this polynomial, but uh, not quite a priori all polynomials. So what I want to write is that this is some linear operator applied to k minus 1. 
Actually, I'm going to multiply both sides by k. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going even to write this of xk, so it's a notation, where psi epsilon of p, so this is going to be p prime, I have multiplied by k, okay? p prime of x, x plus epsilon q, minus two sum of mu uh, epsilon, so this was mu epsilon of x to the s, and x k minus s minus two. Ah, uh, okay, so, okay, so now I, so this was for the first term. Maybe I can give you directly the formula. Okay, so here there is kind of a sudden acceleration. <laughs> So I, I want to, to understand this guy uh, as a function of uh, uh, a polynomial P. Okay, so when I apply it, so when I multiply by K, so what, what I tell you to verify is that if I take XK prime, if I take the po polynomial P, which is XK, uh, then the integral of P prime X as p prime y divided by x minus y mu epsilon. So this will just be uh, a k times the sum of mu epsilon xs x k minus s minus 2. Okay, it's just to write it in a, in a more general way. And so what you see I have proven for you is that if I put here the trace of psi epsilon p times y l, actually I can also uh, put now the trace of some q, uh, not q, uh, r, minus the expectation. So this converges to what's what. So these are just the two derivatives of my monomial. So it's p prime x uh, r prime x uh, d mu epsilon. Okay, and the formula over there is exactly that for p which is x to the k and q which is uh, x to the l. Okay, so why did I uh, write it like this? Because what you see now is that what you want just is to have any polynomial, so you want to invert this operator. Okay, so what you would like to say that this implies that if I look at any covariance, this will go to the integral of psi epsilon minus one of p prime times r prime x d mu epsilon. Okay? So that's really the goal. And so it's always the other step that is crucial in all this, uh, in solving the, uh, uh, the, the Stringer Dyson equation. It's inverting this operator, which we call the master operator. Okay, so inverting the master operator. Okay, but once we have done that, uh, once we have done that, and we, we have shown that all the things which are going to zero are still going to zero for this inverse, then you are good. Okay, and so I, I will not do that, but uh, you can imagine that, uh, so, where is Kasai? Ah, are you right? I know. So the idea is that when epsilon is small, and what you do in several matrices case is that, so when epsilon is equal to zero, this will be clearly invertible because you can obtain any uh, polynomial in this, in this form because this has a lower degree. 
Okay, so x p prime of x, you can obtain any kind of, of polynomial which vanish at zero in this form. And here you have lower, you have a triangular uh, matrix somehow. So you have to do something with this because this is spoiling your inversion. And what you are going to do is just to say, well, if I don't look at polynomial, because this will not be invertible in the world of polynomial because of this, but you can eventually invert it on the space of uh, analytic functions. Okay? And so, so the idea is that, so if you define of A, which is the sum alpha Q A over the degree, to the degree of Q, so where P is the sum of alpha Q, Q. Okay, so meaning that if P, uh, if P of A is finite, this means that somehow if you, if you have a, an analytic series, its radius of convergence is greater than A minus one when it's finite somehow. And so the, the, the theorem will be that uh, for, uh, there exists epsilon positive, so that for all epsilon smaller than epsilon zero, uh, there exists A, so A is typically uh, greater than two, uh, such that psi epsilon is invertible uh, on the closure of the polynomial by this norm. Okay, I'm not going to do, to do this computation because it's done in the nodes, in the more general case of several matrices. And for this case of one matrix, I will show you a much more elegant proof uh, next uh, tomorrow. But uh, the idea is really that you see that when epsilon equal to zero, this is clearly invertible. And when you add the epsilon, so the, the operator corresponding to this, adding this guy is bounded on this space. And because you have the epsilon, you can uh, invert the sum of them just by, by iteration. Okay, so this, this is done in the nodes. But once you have done that, I think you will believe me that you have this uh, result. Do you? It's okay? I can uh, continue to... Okay, so let me go uh, one step further, is how to deduce from this the convergence. So you, you need to uh, go back uh, to Dyson Schwinger equation. Okay, so to show this. Okay, so if you look at so what you add, so you have the trace of x to the k. Uh, so this time you look at this. So this was this expectation of the sum. X, okay. And you have to add the expectation of trace of X, K minus one Q prime. So maybe minus epsilon. And so what you do again is uh, you subtract the, uh, the limit. And so if you do that, so you subtract here the limit, uh, what you see is that what you get is the trace of Xi epsilon so of the polynomial Xk, which is going to be uh, one over n, the sum of the, expect of the expectation of the recentering. Okay, so you put this on the other side, you recenter this guy. So here I cheated just a little bit, which is that you should have also plus the difference between uh, between the limit and the expectation.
Oh, okay. If I do that, okay. Let me just write it like this. So if you use uh, the equation that we had for uh, the limit, and you do some algebra, you will just find uh, this equality. And so uh, you can show by, uh, so you can now multiply by n square. Yes. Uh, by, by n square. Suddenly I have uh, an hesitation, so why do you have n square. Uh, is it n or is it n square? Ah, yeah. It was, uh, I divided it by 1 over n, so it was, it was n, 1 over n square, yeah. Okay, so it, that's right. So that's the right formula. And so, again, what you can see is that the right-hand side, so you can show by induction that this is going to 0. And this is going to your covariance. And so again, you are going to invert this operator to get the formula for the uh, limiting. So this will go to the sum over L of CLK. And then you invert your operator to get uh, the formula for tau 1. Maybe I should put it here. What you find is that tau 1 of xk. So, so to, to invert it, you need to express this in terms of your operator. But So this is your covariance kernel. Apply again to uh, prime of x, p of x minus p of y divided by x minus y. And so... Well, did I, uh, okay, yeah. So this was, so this is a covariance kernel applied to P and R. And so what you can see that by using this formula over there, that tau one, which was the limit of your uh, uh, rescaled uh, difference, is going to converge to C applied to uh, P of X minus P of Y divided by X minus Y. Okay, so this is a, just a sum of uh, uh, sine epsilon minus one. Okay, sorry I'm getting a bit uh, in the notation, but so uh, I think the ideas are quite clear. You're just using, again, your equation taking away all the terms which were small due to your a priori estimates, inverting your operator. So you have to do that, you need somehow to uh, identify everything in terms of polynomials. Okay. And yes. What? What? Uh, well, the integral, so here is the integration. So I suppressed, I have to suppress the limit. So this is the limit of this guy. So I already saw that this, uh, I have convergence of the trace of any polynomial to the, the measure, to the equilibrium measure. So I suppressed uh, the limit. And when I do that, actually the, this expectation is non-zero, but you can, uh, you can see that, I mean, it's some algebra, but you can see that when you subtract uh, everything, the main term on the right-hand side is going to be given by the covariance. And uh, I mean, that's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's again the same trick. 
that when you have this operation, uh, it's too too low. Okay. Okay. So okay, okay. so I, I, I admit I have been a bit fa a, a, a bit uh, fast, but so C the covariance. It's apply. It's something which is. Uh, uh, so C is just this function. Uh, where is this? Getting lost also. So where did I write C? Ah. Okay. So what I. So the covariance is defined as a function, by, by linear function, on polynomials, okay? Now, on the right-hand side here, uh, actually, I forgot, like this, yeah, I forgot this. Uh, on, uh, on the right-hand side, so I, I, I have to, to find how this right-hand side depends on P, on the polynomial P, and uh, the point here is this. So the point is that the sum of xk, xl, xk minus l minus 2, when I multiply it by k, I forgot to multiply it by k, that's why it was a bit. Uh, so this is this formula that I just used before, py of y divided by x minus y. Okay? Oh, sorry, y. Okay, and, uh, and now, I mean, before when I apply C, I think about C applying to the polynomial in X times the polynomial in Y. And the, a compact way to see that is to express this polynomial in X and Y uh, as this, this, uh, this ratio. Okay, and now when, uh, what, I, what I had proved was that tau one of Psi Epsilon of P was converging to this uh, C applied to uh, P prime of X minus P prime of Y divided by X minus Y. And so you have to, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's always the problem to do this kind of computation in, on the blackboard, but uh, I hope it's more or less, less clear, at least the strategy is that now you cannot invert by induction your, uh, your operation. You have to invert your operator, so you have to rephrase everything in terms of polynomials. And here it's not very uh, elegant, but tomorrow when I will do it on matrix model, it's kind of more clearer. And I will do, do this kind of, uh, because here I start with, uh, with polynomials where it's not always completely clear how to identif identify everything. Yeah. So it, it, it was a bit messy at the end. Uh, <laughs> do you, do, do, did you understand more or less the strategy? Uh, I mean, the computation? Uh, Don, uh, who wants more explanation? Maybe that's the bet, best way to, <laughs> to put it. No? <laughs> Nobody. That's what I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> okay, but so, the, the, again, the strategy is, is always the same. You linearize uh, everything around your limit. What you get is terms which are going to be neglectable because of your a priori, um, uh, uh, your a priori uh, controls. And then at the end, you always arrive to equations but which depend on some operator, okay? And to, to be able to conclude that you can do your, you have your result for all polynomial, you need to invert this operator. And this is a master operator and in, in all this uh, question, it's always central. And what we will see uh, tomorrow is that in the case where we don't have a small perturbation, inverting this operator requires actually that you have off criticality, so the density vanishes like a square root. And that's why I was asking Ken about this, uh, because it's always a central question in the, in the matrix model, whether the density of the equilibrium measure uh, decays like, like a square root, and this is the place where it comes. Okay, so if there is no more question, uh, then I will, uh, I will go to the uh, matrix model, uh, one dimensional, okay? And I will start to, okay, because uh, as I said, in, for several matrices, 
uh, we only have this kind of uh, approach, which is a bit uh, painful, but uh, effective. Okay, so matrix beta ensembles. Okay, so, so now I look at the joint law of the eigenvalues, and eventually I can put some beta. And the, the question is to do the same, but now with uh, less assumption on V. And, uh, and of course, I remind you that in the case where beta is equal to 2, uh, this is the joint law of the eigenvalues uh, for the GUE case when V is x squared, and you can add a potential. So it's the previous case. So when beta is equal to 1, these are the joint law of the eigenvalue in the case of the GOE, where you have real entries. Uh, and in this case, what I told you about before could also be done, but it's a, always a bit more complicated because you have extra terms. So actually, you, have not, you don't have an expansion in 1 over n squared, but in 1 over n. So it's always a bit more complicated. and. Uh, uh, it's, uh, so you, you could see it, it, it becomes a mess after some while. <laughs> and so in the case between equal one, it's always even more a mess. Okay, but so now, um, so if V is general, uh, we still have convergence to the equilibrium measure. And this is the first result, but uh, we won't be able to use the dyson schringer equation to prove that. And we have a stronger tool, which is the large deviations. The first theorem is assume that V is continuous. And uh, V goes to infinity fast enough. So I think it's 2 log x. This is uh, greater than 1. Okay, so this is to ensure that somehow your partition function is finite. Then uh, there exists an equilibrium measure, a probability measure, so that for all f, which is bounded continuous, this converges towards the integral of f u v. Almost surely. And uh, furthermore, actually, mu, uh, mu v is compactly supported. Okay. And um, And the second theorem that um, and so the second theorem that we will discuss is uh, if so v is sufficiently smooth, so it's CP for some p big enough. And so mu v can be, mu v has compact support. So it's connected, uh, sorry, connected support. And the measure is of critical. times h of x. Uh, then, 
uh, you have the then you have the the central limit theorem and uh, beta should be positive of course And um, can uh, look at the expectation. And you multiply by uh, n converge to what some d mu one. So as I say, you can on, only take uh, n for the first order, and the log also at the n v. This. Uh, <laughs> One over n square. This will be f zero plus one over n of one. And you can also go. I will discuss until so you can do a, an expansion of this guy, but this time it will be in one over n. Okay, and in fact you could also do expansion. Uh, to a higher order of this guy, but uh, I didn't write it. Okay, and uh, I will discuss a non-connected case uh, later. But we will see that somehow the uh, the central limit theorem is not available; is not true in the, in this case, or not under this form. So it's what F one. Yeah, so it's something else. It's some linear functional, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> maybe uh, in the five minutes, uh, I just say how we prove the first uh, result. And so this is a, a new uh, concept that we didn't uh, use so far, which is large deviation. The theorem is that, so under the, the same assumption as over there, so the distribution of, so the empirical measure so satisfies a large deviation principle uh, with a good right function which is I of mu, I write beta over two V of X plus V of Y plus log of X minus Y mu X Y uh, minus uh, the infimum of this guy over all measures. Okay, so that this is not negative. And so what does this mean? Uh, this means that uh, this means that uh, if I look, so I look at this object as a probability measure equipped with a weak topology. Okay, and so this means that the limb sup as n goes to infinity of one over n squared, the log of n v, the probability that this belongs to some f, bounded by minus infimum 
I over F. And if uh, O is open, you have the same thing, but with the, with the lim inf. Okay, and um, so how do you get the um, this type of conclusion? The point is that uh, I achieved its its uh, so I is a good rate function. Also, I should say that so I is a good rate function. So this means that. So level sets are compact. And uh, the point is that I achieve its minimal value. At a unique mu v. Okay, so that's the way we, we see the convergence in the probability. Uh, there were many other ways to, to see this convergence. I think you can use this, fe uh, for instance, Fekete points, and uh, I imagine that uh, in riemann hilbert uh, techniques, you have uh, other ways maybe to, to see that. So in probability, we, we call that uh, large deviation principle. And why do you uh, deduce uh, this type of results from uh, from that. So the point is that if you take f, so the proof is to take f to be the complement of a ball at mu v. Okay, and so in this case, you see that this will be strictly uh, negative because i has to achieve its uh, uh, its infimum, and when it's in its uh, is taken on this cross set which does not include its minima. So it will be strictly positive because at the minima, because you just subtract the infimum, it's zero. Okay? So then what you see that if for any such ball, what you get is that this probability is decaying like exponential minus n square. So you can use borel Cantelli lemma to see that uh, this, the probability that integral of f minus mu v is greater than delta. So this will be like exponential minus n square C delta, where this is positive. And so you conclude by borel cantelli lemma. So maybe next time I will start by uh, showing the arguments to prove this. Uh, it's not far from a Laplace method, actually. It's uh, not very complicated. But um, I don't know, maybe it's, Tamara, do you think I should give the proof or it's okay for uh, most people to get the, to, or just heuristics? Or? <laughs> no, because you told me not to go too fast. Um, and so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's um, this kind of result is uh, uh, known in this community. So, well, I, I will give you heuristics, and uh, and if uh, if there is a demand, uh, I will give details. So you you can tell me uh, before tomorrow. Uh, it's always a problem with details is that you get lots of epsilon, like what I showed you <laughs> at some point. You can, uh, you can uh, be uh, quite unclear. But so w once we have the convergence, uh, then we will uh, go to the central limit theorem. What I want to, to emphasize here is that if we would do just the um, dyson tringer equation, they don't have a unique solution in general. So we cannot use for the convergence only the dyson tringer equation. Uh, they have a unique solution only when you know a priori that the support is connected. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah.